happy Monday and welcome back to Musings. My name is Elizabeth Manikin from the Ackland Art Museum. I'm joined by my colleague and co-host, Allison portnell Lathrop, and today we have two special guests also from the Ackland staff. Um, for those of you joining us for the first time, Musings is a deck of cards and it contains quotes, questions, prompts from Ackland staff, museum educators, from art historians, philosophers, artists, all speaking to the nature of art, the nature of beauty of museums, and having us think a little bit about how they, um, how we consider them, and also how they shape or reflect how we see the world. And I am excited for today's question and for today's guests. Allison, do you want to introduce our special guests? Yes, thanks Elizabeth. So today we have two folks from different corners of the Ackland. Um, actually, possibly all, almost literally different corners of the building um, for, on all axes. Uh, we have Erin Kernan joining us um, from the administrative team. She's the manager of finance and administration. And we have Nathan Marzin, the head of exhibition design and installation. So welcome Erin and Nathan. We're so excited Thanks. to have you. All Thanks. right. I get to read our question for the day, which includes a quote and then a question to sort of start prompting our discussion. So this quote is from Gustav Courbet, and here we go. I'll, re I'll read it in English, not in, not in the original French. Uh, Beauty, like truth, is a thing which is relative to the time in which one lives and to the individual capable of understanding it. The expression of the beautiful bears a precise relation to the power of perception acquired by the artist. Hmm. All right. In what ways are your ideas about beauty specific to our cultural moment? And in what ways are they timeless? Nathan, would you like to start us off? Sure. Um, as, as far as a cultural moment, this is kind of an intense one to, to have to answer a question about cultural moments. But as I was thinking about this, I felt like um, it's almost the same answer for me at the, the cultural moment and the timelessness. I, I, when, when the town shut down, I found immediately everybody, at least for the first two weeks, there was nobody anywhere. Um, I'm in the mall parking lot near the movie theater, no cars, no people. I was able to take bike rides in the middle of the street. I realized at that point I was noticing so many things that I hadn't seen there because so many distractions. And then I realized, as I was thinking about this, I thought it's kind of that stop and smell the roses thing, but very relevant, I think, right now, because we, we've all had to change the way we look at everything. And so you're seeing beauty in ways you never would have. And even in this, even, even in the surrealness that is or was those days when nobody was out and some of the other surreal things coming to work with only three other people in the building. Yeah, Erin, what about for you? How does, how are you thinking about beauty <laughs> these days? Uh, Nathan was commenting before about what a giant question this is, and that was kind of my initial reaction when I read it too. I feel like you could write several theses on this question. Um, but when I was looking at it, like my first response was kind of a little this little that response, which is not very helpful, but I lean towards um, <clears throat> The idea that pretty much all of one's perception of beauty is is rooted in one's experience and time, their own time, and very little of it is timeless, um, because all of our experience is is connected to, you know, what's going on around us, and not necessarily to ethereal ideas that change all the time anyway. Um, so I thought I needed something a little more articulate to say about it. So I was doing a little googling of the artist I wanted to look at in the second part of the question. Um, and I was looking at her artist statement on her website and she talks about how um, all of the imagery that we see in our lives um, sort of subliminally affects us all the time. Um, it affects our decisions, it affects our perceptions, it can scare us. Um, so that seemed very connected to me. Um, Aaron, what you just said made me think of, I, I spent some time in Lesotho, which is just a small landlocked country inside of uh, South Africa. It's in the mountains. And um, when kids or great grandchildren um, 
draw stick figures. They draw a line and like a horseshoe for a woman. And it's, you know, it's not like the, the triangle that we have. It's just the shorthand for what a woman looks like is just completely different for, you know, from, from a different perspective, a different idea of what a woman is meant to look like. And I think that the way in which we imbibe those different norms or standards, um, it feels so natural and it feels so true because it's, of course, how we've how we see the world and how we've been shaped for world. That little stick figure, like to this day, like blows my mind because it's just a, such a an efficient embedded way of like, oh, here are these two people. This is a symbol symbol that everyone understands, and it was so markedly different, and that that really resonated. Um, that really resonated with me. Um, and Nathan, I I love your. I I've started bird watching. I sit in my kitchen almost every day because like, this is where I do work. And I've never noticed birds before. I mean, sometimes they're very loud at my house, but I can, you know, I've got Carolina wrens over here. I've got cardinals here. I've got Eastern bluebirds over here. And I've never, I've never noticed um, the animal kingdom of Carver really, but it's, um, it's sort of a remarkable thing how we've had to, we've had to shift um, our, the scale of our world for better, for better or worse. And I think that that does change the, the lens for me. Um, Allison, what have, what have you been thinking about or should, should we? <laughs> yeah, with this question, I, I always think about how when we see people, when we are with people at the museum, which unfortunately we are not with people at the museum right now, but when we see people at the museum, you can talk with any person about any work of art and it doesn't matter if they were like your identity I don't have an identical twin I have a sister who's 15 months apart from me if we looked at the same work at the same time growing up from the same places we would have completely different perspectives on it so that's this idea that like for me it's always it's shaped by that actually that sounded a little bit too like <laughs> a little too nature versus nurture. But what I, what I do believe is that um, it is everything is like what you bring to it. So my, she, she might hate something that I love. She might um, love something that I hate. And it's always because she has these, you know, subtle, tiny differences and growing up now she has lots of big differences because she's a a real doctor <laughs> down taking care of COVID patients. But um, all of those things that you bring with you, I think completely shape your ideas of what's beautiful. So, it, and those conversations are always what comes up when I'm with people in the museum. So it's, it's nice to have these conversations with you all today and think about how beauty is constructed, I guess. Um, but we'd love for you all at home to share too, if you have ideas um, in relation to that Courbet quote or how beauty is constructed, share them with us on the Acklands Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram feeds. We'd love for you to join the conversation. See you next Monday. Thanks for being here.